Thank you for joining us on News Today. The office of former president, John Ejekum Kufo, has confirmed reports of a recent meeting with some religious leaders in the country as part of his efforts to settle recent disputes within the opposition New Patriotic Party. In attendance were church leaders such as the Catholic Archbishop of Accra, Right Reverend Gabriel Palmabako, Dr. Mensah Otabel of the International Central Gospel Church, and the moderator of the Presby Church, Reverend Emmanuel Marte. A statement from the former president, however, dismissed media reports that the meeting was held in secret. Frank Ejekum speaks for the former president. The reason behind the statement is because um, about two weeks ago, President Kufo held a meeting with party elders and some um, other prominent personalities in the country. And um, the subsequent reportage on the meeting did portray um, some impressions that were not at the meeting. One, that it was a secretive meeting, and President Kufo wanted to make it clear that he didn't hold a secretive meeting, and that the meeting that he held really is part of what he does usually when there is a problem in the party. We try to bring people together to try to reconcile matters. So what he did was part of what he's been doing all along. So to him, there was nothing secret about it. Secondly, it did came out to say that uh, ten pets were raised and some people spoke um, harshly to some people. And President Paul wanted to say that that never happened. What indeed happened was a free and frank expression of opinion. Because that was the only way we could the bottom of the matters. Um, that were at stake so that we can have um, a sober reflection as the way forward. So it wasn't actually there was any antagonism there, and he wanted to clear the air on that. Um, President Kufo was trying to follow the tradition of what happens in almost every part of this world, including Ghana, where when the problem at home, in the wake, anywhere at all, so people often will go to their clergy, to their pastors, to talk to them and help them resolve it. So he looked at the churches that some of these people attend and invited the top clergy to come help solve the matter. That's why he invited those that is clergy. And I must say, um, the credit of the clergy, that when they came, what they said was that one, they because uh, members of their congregation um, seem to be having problems, and that is their duty to help to resolve those matters. Secondly, they were there for the speak of Ghana and also the MPP. And they did say that, um, even though it looked like it doesn't rain, if ever anybody demanded their services in any such circumstances, would go and they're not doing because of their personal affiliation. So that was well stated, and everybody accepted the right? they were there, that they were not there for partisan politics, they were there for the good of the nation. The ruling National Democratic Congress is asking the National Development Planning Commission to give more political power to district assemblies in the country's 40 year development plan it is drafting. Executives of the party made a suggestion when they met with officials of the commission over the plan. Joseph Opokugapo has the rest of the story. At Wednesday's meeting, NDC executives asked the National Development Planning Commission to develop a holistic plan that will help deal with all aspects of the country's development, including human and infrastructural development. The NDC says empowering local assemblies to own development at that level is a sure way to ensure the 40-year plan is acceptable and implementable. Vice Chair of the party, Samuel Fuswampo, says this will accelerate development. Give them more resources. Give them the opportunity to recruit, train, promote their own officers. Once that is done, I mean, I know that, for instance, the fiscal decentralization aims at decentralizing the payroll system. So that the payroll system goes into the district, people are paid at the district level, then the allegiance to the district, the composite budget, which, has, which is now being implemented, should be strengthened so that we have district composite budget. They have their own budget, they have their ceilings, they have their aspiration. The planning process, as we all know, is now a bottom-up approach involving key stakeholders, the chief, the youth, the market. The NDC adds it's committed to implementing the plan regardless of its manifesto pledges. Commissioner of the NDPC, Dr. Samuel Nina Ashong, says the commission has received similar pledges from other political parties. So far, all the parties we've met have given us their support and uh, unflagging uh, support and encouragement to go ahead because they think it is very important at this stage of our history. You heard the chairman just spoke about uh, things uh, money being locked up in projects or uncompleted projects. Very, very expensive for us as a nation. Uh, resources are not uh, 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 
are searchable, they are unsearchable. So we need to use them judiciously. Last week, the Convention People's Party raised concerns that implementation of the 40-year plan will be impossible unless government cuts ties with the International Development Fund. But Dr. Ashong dismisses the suggestion. We are part of the national community and we remember that we are members of the IMF. We are members of the World Bank. Just like you being a member of that association, you pay dues. When you need technical assistance, you need help, you go back to the association and seek advice. Even if we don't rely on them for money, we can still go to them for advice. Because whether we like it or not, they have a long history of firepower in terms of technical know-how. For Joy News, Joseph Opokugapo reporting. The Ghana Water Company says it will roll out prepaid metering systems on pilot basis this year as part of reforms to bring efficiency in revenue mobilization. About 50% of water produced by the company is unaccounted for. Certain categories of consumers will be targeted for the pilots before a nationwide rollout begins later on. Fred Smith has more. This is the second attempt in less than two years by Ghana Water Company to introduce the controversial prepaid metering system. In January last year, the company was forced to abandon the planned rollout on a pilot basis following widespread public agitation. Prepaid meters, just like the electricity units, cut water supply once credit, but in advance runs out. Civil society groups have labeled it an insensitive approach to dealing with the revenue mobilization challenges facing the company. The new act and managing director, Fred Loku, however, tells Joy News the pilot metering system will be reintroduced before the end of the year. The service that we give uh, is expensive. And once we supply the water, you know, we expect that we should be paid. Unfortunately, it is not very easy to collect that money. And uh, we have to go disconnecting um, uh, our consumers. It's not a very pleasant duty. We don't like to do that. But then uh, it appears as if it's the only way that we can collect our uh, money. If the pay point is, I mean, if it's not uh, convenient for consumers to pay, then likely they keep postponing, you know, their payments, and that, that works against us. That is why we are trying to improve the density of our pay points, and these are some of the measures we're taking. Do you intend to introduce prepaid metering systems so that uh, people will pay before they use, helps you and your, ban your balance sheet? Yeah, you know, uh, for now, we are not doing prepaid metering. But then uh, you understand that PP metering is one of the ways that uh, uh, payment can be uh, made easier, you know, both for the consumer and also for the Ghana Water Company. So what we are doing, and you know, the PP metering also is not for uh, general application. So uh, we want to run a pilot project, you know, uh, to target certain uh, categories of music. When do you hope to start this? Uh, before the end of this year, we hope to start the pilot. The Ghana Water Company is marking 50 years of existence and wants to leverage on the anniversary to push through the prepaid metering plan. They have the backing of the sector ministry and the regulator, the PURC, but face an uphill task of convincing the public and civil society groups to accept it. Many believe prepaid metering would deprive the poor access to potable water an important commodity for human survival. Fred Smith, Joy News. Now, the planned rollout of the prepaid metering system and the anniversary of the Ghana Water Company comes at a time four communities in Accra have had to endure an acute water shortage, which has lasted several months. The residents say lack of the basic commodity is adversely affecting their lives. Joy News' Michaela Anderson reports on the challenges the residents have had to go through to get their water and how they've learned to use it judiciously. In areas like Russia, Banana Inn, Zamrama Line, Dansoman, Mamprobi, Kolegono and Kolebu, residents complain they've not had water for days, weeks and months, a situation that is really affecting their domestic life. In fact, pupils are being forced to wake up very early in the morning just so they could go in search of water bath before going to school. Residents in these areas complain they have to travel long distances in search of water every morning. The situation in Dansoman is not different. And the interesting thing is that 
They are done so man adults even have to bath in basins just so they could store up dirty water to flush fecal matter whenever they visit the loo. Me a bero wa mi jina wa mi timi ko nsuo anafo ha mi ko tu yesika. How can an old lady like me fetch three buckets of water every day? I feel weak. We need water in Dansoman. I bath with three cups of water every day. Those up at Asori Dan don't even get water at all. We need water here. We've not had water for the past weeks. My sister has shut her saloon because there's no water. I'm also unable to wash my clothes. We need water. It's two weeks now. When the water is not flowing, you have to go all the way to somewhere, banana in there, and go and fetch the water. So it has become a problem to us. So in this way, I think that the, it's, it's, it's affecting us badly, and they have to resolve the problem. For At Dansoman, residents are not happy that although they don't have water, they are issued with high water bills. Always here in Dansoma, they open it midnight. Early in the morning, it is shut. We don't know why. We want water and we pay for it. And when they bring water bill, it's so high. They've increased it three times. So why? With the water problem, one funny thing is an adult, a rich man, a poor man, we all stand in basins, gagba. <laughs> and after bathing or washing, you have to keep this dirty water to use it, excuse my saying, to flush your toilet. Because you can't let it go to waste. And you cannot use clean water you can drink or take a shower with to flush your WC. This man has had this problem for us. Since I came here, Phil, I was born and bred here. We've had water problem, water problem, water problem. So something should be done. The situation is not different at Mamprobi, where residents complain they don't get water to cook. The most um, important thing we, we do in, in this area is cooking because Kenke is the most food store here. So if there's no water around, we find it very difficult. Three years in here, what pipe here? Four, a four, a four. Our taps have not been flowing for the past three years at Mamprobi Choco Extra O. We only buy water from boreholes, but can you imagine the water company brought me a one city bill to pay? In fact, I chased the man out immediately. I sell ice kinky, but I don't have water to prepare and sell. We use wash our hand, and we used to drink as usual. At the same time, we use water closet. My children are always late to school because they have to go all the way to Tunga to fetch water. Because not few only young politicians can me allow me to use them at school. Because me can run, they can be here. Eh, eh. I want you to make my wife meet the ton, tonga, na meet the afon. There's more news on news today, right after these messages. Thank you for staying on news today. Now, sanitation is a major challenge facing many metropolitan municipal and district assemblies in Ghana. Now, this has been worsened by the indiscriminate dumping of waste and the absence of dump sites in many communities in the country. Now, in the following report, Matilda Omega highlights the sanitation challenges of Ashaiman, a community in the country's capital, Accra. Take a walk through Ashaiman, and you will not have a hard time appreciating why cholera continues to plague this community and the country at large. Ashaiman is densely populated with limited social amenities. But the absence of these facilities 
does not seem to bother many of the residents, for whom environmental cleanliness is not a priority. Atni Teteamui, a suburb of Ashaiman, famously known as Tulaku, residents dump their waste into gutters in the middle of the night. Domestic animals feed on leftover food and waste bins in the area, and flies are a common sight. The gutters in the area are the new site for disposing human excreta. Sanitation continues to be a major challenge facing residents here. I would be interacting with some of the residents who will be sharing with me exactly uh, what they make of this sanitation issue that has become so critical that they want government to address. The situation is the gutter. The gutter is given its problem. Yeah, only gutter is here. Warriors. There is no nothing warriors. Gutter. How, how, how is the gutter disturbing you? Gutter, when it rain, when it rain, rain, it enter people their house. That's what we are crying for. Government said that the gutter, only gutter we are crying for. This place here, there's no. There's, look at look, if you look uh, look at the joint there. From the joint there to the two gates, we now have a freedom. When it rain, rain right now, everybody will stand. We are not sleeping, so we are wait unless a rain stop before we can get them sleeping because. If there's no gutter, we can't have a freedom. Uh, only gutter we are crying for. Okay, uh, actually this area, the sanitation is very poor. As we can see, the area is the first impression to a Shaiman community. And then uh, behind my back, you can see that uh, they've constructed the gutter and then leave it here. And then if you look back, you see that uh, we have a cattle ranch there. And then uh, the place is bushy. And then uh, we have open defecation within the area. It's very bad. Some residents now prefer to openly defecate near the tow booths along the Accra Tema motorway. And this current system that we are having in this community, people will be defecating around the whole area. We are having toilet facilities in the area, more than eight toilet facilities, commercial and government ones. But people leave these things all and then uh, go down there and then defecate themselves. Mm -hmm. It's very bad. And beyond that, too. People do dump dead animals at the, dead, at the back there, the gutter, and which is giving us a scent that we can bear. If you're passing through the motorway, you'll be hearing the scent, and then uh, people will be saying that who are those who are staying in this area. Actually, this area is not bad. Bad people are not in this area. But the way they leave the environment, it made people think so. Uh, as you can see, it's like the area is a slum. You see, it's like wooden structures. So it's hardly people are trying to get a place to sleep, not to talk of putting up a toilet facility. Till the Ashaiman Municipal Assembly steps in to rectify the situation, residents of Ni Teteamui West and East will continue to live, eat, and sleep in filth, a development which sets the tone for a cholera outbreak. Matilda Homaga for Joy News, Ashaiman. Waste management company Zoom Lion has discounted claims by the Cape Coast Metropolitan Assembly that the company is responsible for the mountains of garbage piling up on the streets of Cape Coast. Now, according to the company, the landfill site that the garbage is to be sent to is full, hence the current insanitary condition in the metropolis. Following reports of piles of garbage on the streets of Cape Coast and the central region, Joy News followed up to the waste management company Zoom Lion for answers. While the Cape Coast Mayor Prisla Ahing Kranche blames Zoom Lion for the ugly spectacle, Zoom Lion returned the blame to the Metropolitan Assembly. Regional manager of Zoom Lion Company, Ernest Kusi, revealed that the Assembly has not made available a site to dump the waste. And they're supposed to at least sign a proper contract with a private contractor to manage the site. All metropol metropolis, Kumasi, Takradi, uh, Pung, they have a separate co uh, contractors who work on their landfill and they pay separately on that. So engaging with them, and uh, I'll be very happy if they can reconsider their decision to at least let us look at a long-term solution for the final disposal site. And then if a contract has to be signed, then we look at it so that we have a constant machine to be on site and also prepare the place very well. So that this thing become, will, not become, will not be a recurring issue. The mayor of Cape Coast is yet to respond to this latest claim by the waste management company. Richard Kojinyako's report for Joy News. 
Now, this year's Habitat Fair opens tomorrow at the West Hills Mall near Waja. The fair will be open to all from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Friday, July 24, and Saturday, July 25. Ahead of that, I've been interacting with a representative of our title sponsor, HFC, and an exhibitor, Sethi Realty, on what to expect tomorrow. We're trying to call affordability in competition. Okay, what HFC believes in is that to be able to enhance supply, you need to augment the demand side. So what we are trying to do is to bring all the ST developers in Accra together from all, sec all every area, location, vicinity, all those on the Tema Road, those Pram Pram, everywhere, come together so that when individuals or the public come and they want to buy a property, you have choice. They will be able to assess um, how much one can qualify for um, as mortgage, and you'll be able to know what property I can buy with the amount that I qualify for as mortgage. And we think that that will offer the, pu the public the opportunity to choose, because some, may, 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 some people may want to own their property on the Nsawam Road for some reason. Others prefer different locations, but if you have all the real estate developers together, you'll be able to go through the price. But our goal is to provide a decent, functional, and modern living space for an everyday family, for the Ghanaian family, okay? Compared to the market, we are priced lower, up to 30% lower. And not only that, but we all want to make a saving in life. Obviously. Okay? And for that, we need to cut costs, okay? One way we can cut costs is to live more practically and efficiently every day. You can't simply go to your employer and say, my cost of living has gone up. I need a bigger paycheck. Okay, so living practically and efficiently is one way we can save money. Well, what's your target class, let me ask? Basically everybody, but mainly to the middle to lower income group. Mainly the Ghanaians who are living abroad, the diaspora market in Ghana, in, sorry to say, UK, uh, Germany, Holland, okay. US. Okay. I was just in the UK. Uh, last week and we had a lot of good leads from there in fact mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully this week I'll be chasing up those leads to close some deals and they were very promising in fact. Well, wow. we trying to um, bring all these estate developers, not only them but all other people who have something to do with property those who sell building materials, those who sell land and other things. And um, HFC also has a subsidiary called HFC Realty. <coughs> and HFC Realty ha has some houses available that you're selling. HFC Realty has decided to give a discount of 22,000 Ghana cities on these houses um, for the sake of this, this, this fair. Okay. So when you come in and you want to buy a house, you visit HFC Bank stand, you can visit HFC Realty and find out what houses they have to sell and you'll be, you, you'll be given one to buy. Now the Voter Review Authority is conducting journalists around a number of project sites which it says should add about 260 megawatts to the national grid by November. Israel Lai is with the team and joins us now on the phone. So, Israel, can you tell us much more about this trip and uh, what, what has uh, surfaced so far? Right, so as you indicated, uh, we're, we're visiting the plant. One of the plants that we had to visit, the first one we had to visit was one in the thermal, uh, thermal uh, enclave. So, at that point, we, we saw the engineers working on one of the, it's, it's a cement plant, and we're told that it was going to generate about 38 megawatts upon completion. And they're hoping that this 38 meg megawatts can come on stream sometime in November. Then we also visited the Bone Thermal Plant. The Bone Thermal Plant is a lot bigger, and uh, you can see the massive structure when you get there. And with that one, it's going to produce, it generate 220 megawatts. Now they're hoping that that will also become available sometime in October. So if you put the two of them together, then we're looking at 250, 260 megawatts coming on stream, which, I, I mean, once it, it becomes available, it helps to ease the current shortfall we're having. The, the basic understanding or the basic explanation of the kind of challenges we're confronted with right now is that there's not enough electricity to go around for everybody else. So 
even though the country may demand about or may need about let's say 1,800 megawatts at, the, at any point in time, we're probably producing about 1,400, which means that you're having a deficit of about 400 megawatts. So if we're getting 220 coming from coal and we're getting another 38, 250 coming on stream, then it should, it means that what is left or the deficit that's left or the deficit is lessened. So we're having a deficit of just about uh, 120 there about. So where you're having a situation where your lights will go off maybe for 24 hours and come on for 12 hours, if they can work around it that, that you go off for maybe uh, 12 hours and have power for another 12 hours, that's what some of these plants that are being worked on will help. We're currently at the Pong uh, Hydro Station where they're doing a retrofitting. So it's not a new plant, but there's an old plant that they're looking at it's essentially overhauling, if you'd like to put it that way, like you're having an engine that's been overhauled so that it can work better. That's the uh, retrofitting that's happening now. From here, we'll go to the other or the main hydro plant, which is the Akosomo, where the water level is uh, quite low and as a result, the situation is quite critical that we'll get to understand what exactly is happening. Many thanks for your time, Israel Lai. That was Joy News editor, Israel Lai, giving us some updates on the past situation. We're taking a break here on Joy News. We'll be back shortly with some business. Hello there, time now to get you updated in the world of business. My name is Abigail Adomakuenchi. The Association of Ghana Industries, AGI, has confirmed there would be more job losses in the coming months as a result of the downward review of the country's growth targets for the year. In his mid-year review and supplementary budget presentation, the Finance Minister, Seteque, announced a revision of the country's overall real GDP growth from 3.9% to 3.4%, among other economic variables. This is because of the toll the current challenging economic environment is taking on businesses. AGI President James Osaria J tells Joy Business this would invariably lead to further job cuts in the private sector. Government is the biggest vendor in any economy and ours is no exception. So if we actually review our growth targets downward, what it means is that the economy is shrinking and uh, you cannot have a situation where the economy is not growing the way it should grow because it's going to affect the private sector. If it does affect the private sector, definitely we can only respond by reducing our capacity or production, which invariably would also affect our I mean, staff strength. So what we need to do is to look at the key things that will stimulate growth for private sector to grow in their production and also increase I mean, export, which will be very key and important to any industrial development. Meanwhile, the association has welcomed government's shift in borrowing from the domestic markets, but says the public debt stock is still a threat to economic growth. This would definitely bring some level of relief in crowding out the public sector. You know, however, uh, we think that borrowing in itself, especially excessive borrowing, is no good for the country. Uh, what we need to do is to ensure that the macroeconomic ability, I mean, is created in terms of access to capital, interest rates, and uh, more importantly, stability of our currency, which we think are key indicators for any private sector to try. Now to the stock market, African finance business AFB has listed on the alternate market of the Ghana Stock Exchange. With the hope of raising about 100 million CDs of bonds within a year, AFB has already been oversubscribed by 30% and rated BBB by Global Credit Rating. The rating makes AFB Ghana's first rated bond. Africa Finance Business, AFB, received approval to list up to 100 million cities bonds over a period of one year. The financial company has so far raised 38 million by offering bonds of 30 million cities. Managing Director of AFB, Anod Parker, says it is extremely satisfied with the investor confidence and is calling on all to patronize its shares. After months of preparation, regulatory engagement, and investor roadshows, we are listing what will now become Ghana's first corporate rated bond. This listing celebrates the momentous achievement of our efforts to remain a, sustain a sustainable business. 
It also humbles us in a way that makes us realize that our journey to greatness as a company has only just begun. Director General at the Securities and Exchange Commission, Dr. Edua Nani Entry, charged AFB to ensure good practice of corporate governance. AFB listing, on the, its listing of its bonds today becomes a second company after Israel loans to list bonds on the gas. As you are aware, Samba Foods Limited and Meridian Marshalls Holding Company Limited have listed their equities on the gas. In fact, listing on the gas is gathering momentum both from the equities and the bond side. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to advise AFB and all companies in the country to ensure the practice of good corporate governance in their organizations. It has been observed that the flight for global capital starts with good corporate governance. Providers of capital to corporations increasingly rely on the corporate governance of the corporations they invest in or lend to to provide them with actual accountability and responsibility. It is therefore critical that corporations practice sound corporate governance. Director of the Financial Sector Division of the Ministry of Finance, Joseph Kognu, says government is committed to providing favorable macroeconomic environment in Ghana, conducive for both companies looking for funds and investors. AFB, a financial service company involved in providing SME credit products in sub-Saharan Africa, is the fourth to list on the alternate markets of the Ghana Stock Exchange. Director of Corporate Communications and CSR of Tigo Ghana, Gifty Bingley, is asking Corporate Ghana to do more in supporting the educational needs of underprivileged communities. She maintains that will help educate and get Ghanaians in those parts of the country well informed to enrich Ghana's human resource for development. In the communities where we work, if we're able to support them and improve living standards and improve conditions that people live in, generally it inures to the benefit of our business because when people are educated, they are well informed, they're able to make better choices, they even become digitally savvy and you know can use our service. So it, 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 we're looking at this from a long term, not the immediate goals and it will be hundreds and thousands of children that will go through the school and we will end up having doctors and nurses and architects and all the people that we need to be able to help build this country's human resource in future and that in itself is rewarding because as a business you don't function well in an environment where when people are down it's tough to make good business sense so when people are up um, that's where you're able to do more and now we all for business my name is Abigail Aduma Quinchy. to you wherever you are. You're still here on News Today. My name is Benedict Ozu and we'll talk sports. In our very first story, Accra Heart of Oak got their Premier League campaign back on track after thumping Heart of Lions 4-0 at the Cape Coast Stadium in a midweek fixture yesterday. Now, Fovi Agude hit a brace with Eric Komi and Salasi J scoring the other goals and an experienced set of all the executives which included former chairman Harry Zako, Isaac Tete, popularly known as TT Brothers, Stephen Akwete, and a squashy Alhaji Hats and Ni Aibonte, the second, traveled to Cape Coast to rekindle the Phobian spirit. Now, a board member of the club, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamakuli, tells Joy Sports the move in unity by the old executives is in the right direction. The spirit of Accra has of folk drives on unity. The Phobian spirit hates division. I would like to congratulate, congratulate everyone who, one way or the other, has contributed to this wonderful victory of the club. Prior to this uh, particular victory, the, what I will call uh, unnecessary, you know, criticisms of the present board. The board has been quite all along, which I think is good. Some of the board members decided to go to Cape Coast to watch the map, which I think is very good. And my proclamation that the spirit of Hearts of Folk thrives on unity, that they have shown a sign of unity. Was Dr. Dr. Nahu, Nahu Tamaklu. He is a board member of Accra Hearts of Folk. So almost all the week 23 fixtures of the first Capital Plus Premier League generated lots of competition as well as very interesting results. In all, 14 goals were scored in all matches at all eight league centers. So we can now look at the uh, scores, the results of uh, the first capital plus, the matches that were played, BA United 
drew 1-1 one, one with Accra Great Olympics at the Sunyani Coronation Park. Wafa defeated at Sante Kotoko by a goal to nil at the Sugar Cope Park. Bekum Chelsea, they, have, they continue their fine form. They defeated Liberty Professionals by two goals to nil. And Kofi Owusu scored in that game. Mediama SC also defeated Bichim United by two goals to nil. And Nathaniel Asamoah hit a brace in that game to extend his tally to 15 goals in the first capital plus Premier League. And Intala is also defeated Hazakes by two goals to nil. While all stars were at home to Idiana Stars and they defeated Idiana by a goal to nil. Nakra had to folk surprisingly thumping Heart of Lions by four goals to nil at the Cape Coast Stadium. And Ashanti Gold League leaders they drew goalless with the Dubiase cutting their lead shot uh, there to two points. Now look at the standards. Ashanti Gold are still leading with uh, we are still leading with 41. Bukum Chelsea they have moved to second with 39. So just two points separating Ashanti Gold and Bukum Chelsea. Wafa are third by virtue of beating Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Now they are third with 36 points. Intalis are fourth with 36 points. Just a goal difference there with four and eight separating Intalis and Wafa. While all stars are fit with 35. Indiana Stars are set with 35 and Mediama SC, they 33 and Hazakes with 8, uh, 32. Accra Hartofolk, they've now moved to the 12th position, Kumasiya and Tokodoko also with. So you look at the rest, the bottom three is the Heart of Lions are still in the relegation battle, 28 points, and uh, the Olympics are there with 15 position, 26 points, and BA United languishing bottom. Of the B uh, of the league table with 18 points. So now we can look at the top scorers. I mentioned Nathaniel Asamoah. He has extended his lead to 15 yesterday. He scored in their game, hitting a brace there. So Nathaniel Asamoah now 15. Kofi Osu of Brecum Chelsea has scored 11 goals. And you look at the the players that have scored 10. Uh, Ahmed Tui plays for Santo Kotoko Kennedy. I share with Liberty Professionals Stephen Balfour, Brecum Chelsea, Fusin Inuhu of New Dibiase Mohamed. Yakubu of Ashgold, they've all scored 10 10 goals. And you look at Gilbert Fiamini of Accra, for Noah Mati of Bichim United, and Sharif Joe Mohammed, they have scored eight respectively. So that's it by way of the Ghana Premier League. We can do some more stories. And the president of Ghana Athletics Association, that's Professor Francis Dodu, is predicting another disastrous campaign for Team Ghana at this year's All Africa Games. Now, the man who doubles as president of the Athletics Association says the country is ill prepared for the multi-sport event and predicts a recurrence of the Maputo debacle four years ago. The, the signal seemed to be the same as, as what, what occurred then. And the, again, I'll say the core thing was the very late release of money. Because when money comes very late, what it does is it basically throws everything into a frenzy. People buy whatever they can get a hold of, whether it's the right thing to buy or not. Tickets are booked late, which means you're paying a premium for tickets. We got to Maputo, and when it was time to come back, the team, uh, teams would go to the airport and would find out that only three people from that team could get on the plane. And then at 11 a.m., you see the rest return into the games village well if you don't buy tickets early you see how many flights go into brazzaville how many flights go into brazzaville on the days that basically surround the opening ceremony so we're going to be competing for a set number of tickets and if you don't buy early in addition to paying more you also put yourself at risk of having standby seats as opposed to because yeah, planes can only carry so many people and those were some of the issues that sort of uh, came out in the maputo report and it looks like we're going there again so that was Professor Francis Dodi there. Now we can move on and do some more stories. And FIFA has asked the Russian Football Union to explain why it's banned Ghana midfielder Emmanuel Frimpong for two matches for his reaction to fan racism and did not sanction the alleged abusers team that Spartak Moscow. Now in a video from Friday's uh, Russian Premier League game, Spartak Moscow fans could be heard racially taunting FC Ufa midfielder that's Emmanuel Frimpong. Now the former Arsenal player is black, reacting with a finger gesture to the fans led to Frempon being banned for two games while Spartak escaped punishment over the latest racism incident to blight Russian football ahead of the 2018 World Cup. Now the Russian Football Union found no evidence of racism but FIFA sustainability head Federico Adeci whose brief covers racism issues said that on Thursday just uh, some minutes ago that the Russians have been given until Tuesday next week to respond to the governing body's disciplinary department.
that's it for me. My name is Benedict Tools. So enjoy the rest of the program. But we can do some other stories now. And the Kolebu Teaching Hospital has rescinded its decision to dismiss its pharmacy director, Elizabeth Bruce. The Human Rights Court in Accra has ordered the hospital to also pay 2,000 Ghana cities to Madam Bruce. Fred Smith joins us on the line with more. Well, okay. Well, indeed, we do have we do have the lawyer for uh, Godfrey Odami, who is lawyer for uh, for for Bruce. Contention was that well, if you dismiss an employee, was she has an action against the establishment pending in court, which has not yet been determined, then it seeks to prejudice the hearing of the matter, and that clearly constitutes contempt of court. Are there any costs awarded? Yes, of course, yes, yes. I mean, of course, the inconvenience that were occasioned, um, inconvenience and the injury that had been occasioned, Mrs. Elizabeth Bruce, has cost of 2,000 Ghanaians was awarded. Yes, but the most important thing is that, yes, now she's an, an employee of the teaching hospital, and, and, and the letter purporting to either dismiss or terminate her employment has been withdrawn. Uh, where, where does that leave us? Because it was already uh, uh, yes. challenged to the contradiction case yes. uh, that was ongoing. Uh, in the light of today's development, what happened? It means we can freely continue with the hearing of the um, action challenging the interdiction. Yes, we contend that interdiction was unlawful. It violates the civil service regulations and what have you. And that action is still pending. Yes, that is what they sought, they sought to avoid by terminating her. They thought that by terminating her, it means that she's no more an employee. And it would have put pay to our earlier action challenging the interdiction. But now with this decision, we can freely contest the lawfulness of the interdiction. And I believe that will triumph. So she's an employee for now. That is where it leaves us. Secondly, she's fighting the lawfulness of the interdiction. Oh, that'll be it for news today here on Joy News Multi TV. Before we go, though, a run through our major stories. And the Kolebu Teaching Hospital has withdrawn the dismissal of its director of pharmacy following a court directive. And also, the Ghana Water Company is set to roll out prepaid metering by the end of this year to improve revenue mobilization. For more news, do well to log on to myjournline.com. My name is Kwabna Chenche Hindu Enjoy the rest of our broadcast.